So, yesterday was Veterans Day. This year, like many others, people gathered around their families and friends, thanking God or other entities for their loved ones still being alive. Alive after going to foreign lands in pursuit of perceived national enemies into hostile territory that claimed enough of their brothers and sisters in arms, their memorial gravestones now often looked indistinct in a sea of others. A giant white landmark, testament to the decisions of men and the acts of the men and women who obeyed their commands until the last breath. People call the troops they know, tag them in social media, and always, as tradition would have it, admonish all other nationals they know to thank a vet or support the troops. Patriotic fervor swells, and people unite for yet another time. In the year around the flag, it's the feelings of gratitude and belonging overcome many differences. And possibly, citizens feel apart from their normal struggles, becoming fellow Americans for just a day, relishing the freedom so dearly fought for even to this day. Flags raise, prayers are breathed, and the country is renewed in support for the men and women who keep, that keep America safe, free, and secure. It might be prudent to state at this point that I did not participate in Veterans Day. I did not tag any known veterans. I did not hoist a flag, post religious sentiments adorning Google image results of graveyards and war zones too massive to be proud of. I didn't thank a vet or relish my freedom or grow closer to anyone any more than I already would anyway. No tears were shed, and too many have already been shed for many things not the least of which is that Veterans Day is a pathetic excuse for a memorial to the vets, a slap in the face of legitimate actors of virtue, and a fucking travesty to human liberty and freedom. Think about it, if it hasn't crossed your mind already. If Veterans Day is legitimately there to promote the health of the troops, why did it start by the hand of Woodrow Wilson, who is known to have reserved intel regarding the military nature of the Lusitania and its contents, so just enough Americans would be on it to provoke America's insertion into the war to end all wars, when Germany sunk it? Why, was, why is it that this war started in context equally dubious as the Second World War and 9-11, when U.S. officials knew damn well enough about the coming attacks to stop them in their tracks, should they have so chosen? Why was the Civil War only about slavery once it became a point of convenience to an administration that previously rejected any concern for the well-being of slaves? Why did Bush send so many troops after such notoriously ill-informed goals as WMDs, and why did his administration have so many targets with CIA connections? Why did Obama increase drone and paramilitary activity in nations from which he withdrew troops? The answer is simple. War is a racket. You can see it in recruitment posters on school counselors' walls. It's emblazoned on multi-packs of junk food with empty calories and emptier promises to support the troops. It's on the glossy pages of the spam mail littering the streets, adorned with countless offers from many businesses to partake in holiday tradition and get in on the Veterans Day sale before it's too late. It's on the lips of every angered American saying a variation of you do that to my flag around me, the flag will look good by comparison. But please, veterans, allow your free coffee and food and your discounted washing machine to honor the memory of the fallen and help compensate for the sacrifice you gave to your country, because the VA won't be there for you. Your class makes up an unreasonable am amount of the homeless, divorced, and impoverished populations. You suffer diseases, disorders, and discouragement every day, and you get to watch as so many funds allocated originally to you and your fellow vet go to pad the bottom line of yet another political agenda, while countless more are discharged to live a life just as you are. But at least you get a coupon book for BOGO offers at the local outlet mall and theater complex. Try to let that quell your rage, so you don't become another statistic reading something like, Armed veteran suspected is involved in latest shooting. News at 10. The fact is that once the men and women in uniform have served their purpose to the state, they've lost their value to most of the people that would have once saluted them. 
once they're no longer launching loads of ordnance worth more than their life's salaries. On orders of the flyers of the red, white, and blue, they'd better be invested in the stock for those companies or they have a guarantee of nearly nothing on the outside. They're either over, over there or they're bad hardware. If it sounds like I'm being harsh, good. The moment the truth is told should be as harsh as possible in order to get people talking, and everyone should be talking, even shouting until this travesty is understood and appreciated for what it is. But that can't be found in Veterans Day, no. A holiday that worships the glamorizing of American war and conflict in a way only rivaled in the States by the 4th of July and Memorial Day. Can more clearance anyone? For the sake of discourse, let's just take a brief look at the chief claim of typical troop support arguments, that they fought for our freedom. It must seem extremely callous and ungrateful for me to make these statements if you still believe that, but where's the evidence? The militarized police state where vehicles and equipment purchased by the DOD are now siphoned off to local law enforcement officers, where every aspect of life is regulated, fined, and otherwise threatened, where Bearcats, the vehicle style once a familiar sight in the deserts of some far-off nation, are now recognized by people in their hometowns, where hearing stories of unarmed veterans shot and beaten to death by police is common enough to be old news a week or two later, and most lifelong civilians' deaths don't even show up on the public radar. Just look at these names for a single taste of coldly normal horror that pervades American policing. Look up Stanley Gibson, Dennis Reynoso, Parminder Singh Shargil, Jonathan Montano, Jose Guerrera and Anthony Hill should be enough to start your blood to boil. This is how veterans are treated for misstep, and there are tens of cases of civilian death for every one of those. And that's mostly just American safety at stake. How about privacy? How, how about the TSA, which still hasn't stopped a terrorist? NSA mass spying and data collection? And the Patriot Act? How about Operation Vigilant Eagle, where vets are directly targeted as p potential threats? Or the Smith Act, which calls into question Americans' ability to even safely distribute copies of the Declaration of Independence for fear of being labeled a traitor? So what freedom was that again? Oh, right. Freedom to do exactly as we're told or face the consequences. With such great options, how can we choose? None of this even touches, though, on the destruction and devastation leveled on foreign population by the troops, some of which do it legitimately thinking they're doing the right thing, and some just enduring the remainder of whichever conflict the state decides is theirs for the risk of losing their paycheck. But it's fine, because the state says it is, right? Totally great. Disagree and be a turncoat. And of course they're doing the right thing, no matter how many casualties are amassed, and how much the corpses of the fallen on the other side of the field are the butt of xenophobic jokes and downtime. It's either assumed that the troops were in the right, or it's assumed that the troops were operating on bad intel. Never that any of them had motives that weren't pure. Why do we even thank the troops for their service if most of it is kept so tightly under wraps that we can't even know what we applaud with such ambiguous statements? How can we support the troops if we don't even know what they do? This nationalism, when rationally analyzed, is no better than the nationalism associated with any other nation, and American exceptionalism is a mask over the ugly face of the most murderous gang on the planet, the state. So I have a proposition. Instead of simply allowing Veterans Day to exist on its own, an island, isolate from the terrors of war, and wholly disrespectful in nature to the veterans that it is supposedly designed to commemorate, we need a new national tradition. I propose that from here on out, November 12th, be commemorated as International Anti-War Day. A day to remember the fallen and thank the survivors by counting the toll of war and taking a hardline stance against it, and saying loudly if necessary, NEVER AGAIN. It is superior to Veterans Day in every way as it acknowledges the horrors of the past and resolves that the effort of all involved not be in vain. It seeks to have a peaceful tomorrow, after so many yesterdays, in strife, conflict, and misery. Did you know that the U.S. has been at war almost solidly since its inception? So strange that so much can be won, while so little can change in the process. So let's do this. 
let's ensure that if something was won by war, it should be peace and not this endless cycle of death and despair that has pervaded this world for millennia. Let's fucking stop this madness and stop killing the youth for old men's schemes. It's time for a new look at veterans' affairs. Join me, and I believe we can do something important here, because you know standing still in the same lockstep routine has always been the practice and will not result in the success of so many promises for peace in the past. Like, share, and favorite this video. Let's get this conversation going. This is